A blessed evening to all of you who are here with us in the shrine and also those fellow worshippers in other parts of the world. I would like to continue this uh, reflection of the first reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. As uh, we know, it is the earliest letter written by St. Paul to a particular community, one of the uh, oldest written uh, letter to a particular community. And we see here uh, important lessons maybe for us as Christian communities still, as individuals, but as also as a church, as communities. And here we see the, uh, that uh, Paul is trying to remind them of what he has done, his efforts to announce the gospel, the good news. Also of his choice to live from his work, probably making tents. He was a tent maker. No, as we see uh, him doing this in Tarsus. And the Apostle uh, Paul prides himself on not being burdensome to anyone, although he acknowledges that he has the right to live from his apostolic work, which he willingly renounces. It also recognizes that the uh, recipients, those who receive the word, have accepted it, has announced to them, and is pleased for the response of these communities. His efforts have paid off, and there is no greater satisfaction for a missionary than to see the fruit of his evangelizing word. And that is that the community is the fruit of the work proclaimed. When there is a vibrant community living, trying to follow the Lord, trying to live according to the word they have accepted, that is one of the most beautiful, if not the most satisfying experience of a pastor, of a missionary. Paul also states that he has, he himself, behaved as a true father with his children. Meaning, the community that was born, the Christians that were born out of his preaching, the relationship is that of a father. Probably this is the reason why your priest, we call them father, probably because of this, you know? One of the reasons why the tradition of calling the pastors of the church, the shepherds of the church as father, you know? And I think it is a beautiful uh, image of this relationship. In this attitude, he has exercised generously and does not think that this, is his, this sincere confession of his pastoral seal is not actually boasting or to decrease his authority. On the other occasions, he has opened his heart to those he considers as his children in the realm of faith, of course. No? With this, he implies that the apostolic word is very similar to the, a request of a mother, for example, who cares for her offspring. The lesson that emerges here from these attitudes 
is very eloquent. That paternal care, that care of a father with those whom we want to engender for the life of faith. The intimate and recognized joy in re realizing that the proclamation of the gospel has taken hold in the evangelized community and transforming its life. Paul renounces the legitimate support that could be expected from the community so that it can be seen that the primary interest of the apostle is not material but solely spiritual. As we listen and meditate this uh, Word of God, the experience of Paul being an evangelizer, being a father of the community of uh, the faithful of Thessalonia, Thessalonica, the Lord invites us also to see our own attitude towards the church our community. We realize that being church implies community and our care for that community. And our salvation, our progress is connected with others. Our love, our concern for the community is in fact an expression of our faith, of our following of Christ. Many times I do not know if we still have that idea that to be saved is ako at ang aking Diyos. I and my God. Bahala na kayo. We realize the message of the Word of God is the center of the proclamation, while the individual is important, yet the goal is to form a vibrant, strong, cohesive community who follow Christ. May we, in our own way, help our communities, wherever we are, our uh, our commitment to the ministry, for example, that we have, thanks to the ministries of lectors we have, that the priest does not need to read everything in the Mass, or other ministries like catechists, like parents, the Lolo and Lola teaching their children. These are all ways of helping the community, the church, to grow. So, as Paul has done during his time, may we become also Paul to each other to become servants, ministers, for that is what it means. The meaning of ministry is to serve. To serve for the interest of the community. And may God be praised and glorified in the church, the, the community that is united in His name. During these days, I think uh, in few days or in one month or so, the Synod of Bishops in Rome regarding the synodality which we have been talking about during these past three years, the center of which is, of course, to be able to live as a vibrant church, that the church that we love, you know, 
consisting, of course, of Jesus Christ, our head. They baptize the pastors, our shepherds, and all the baptized that we contribute for the growth of this church. So let us, in our own way, especially in prayer, we remember this intention that uh, the gathering of bishops this coming October may be fruitful and may help the church reflect, grow in this in its life as a faithful servant of the Lord. Amen.